MakerWorld implemented a new feature at the end of June, which is the customizable Fusion 360 file support, uh, which is really cool. So let's take a look at how that works and why it's so powerful. So we're going to start from a brand new model here. So exit out of that one. And we're going to start from the parameters here in the dropdown. So modify and then parameters. So we'll do user parameters and we'll add them. I already know that I want to make a bin, so it'll have a length. And I'm going to do underscore millimeters. I'm going to give the units in the, the variable name here, and you'll see why later. But for now, unit millimeter expression, let's go with 50. And then we'll add a width. So width underscore millimeters again, and we'll make that 25. We'll add a height again, millimeters, and we'll make that 10 millimeters tall. And then we'll add a wall thickness. And that we might just make one millimeter. And for demonstration's sake, we're also going to create a hidden parameter, which we'll make zero just for demonstration's sake. And we're going to star or favorite all of the parameters that we want to use. So we're going to use the length, the width, the height, and the wall thickness. And we'll leave the hidden unchecked. So no star for hidden. And we'll do OK. And now I'm just going to draw a basic bin or a rectangular prism. And we'll do our dimensions here. Call this our length, and this way our width. And we'll go and do the solid extrude, and that's going to be our height. So we have our general outline, and then we can do a shell on the top surface, and that will be our wall thickness. There we go, basic little bin and it's being driven by these parameters that we have in our table. So if we go in and change, say, this one to 40, you can see that it automatically updates in the model. We'll change that back to 25, just for gem demonstration's sake. And we're back to being a little bit skinnier there on the bin. There we go, that's modeled up. I'm gonna take a quick snip just for further along in the video. And now we're gonna save that as our parametric bin. And we can export it once as a step onto our desktop. And we can also export it. Now this is important. We're going to export it as a Autodesk Fusion archive file or an F3D file type. So we can export that. And so now we're done in Fusion and we can hop into, we can hop into Bamboo Studio here. We're going to create a new project and we're just going to create a version of this parametric bin. We can slice it and we can save it as our 3MF. That's all we have to do over here. And now we can hop back into Maker World and I can go straight to upload. And yes, I do have all these files. And browse for this guy, which is the 3MF file, and then browse for this one where I can use the .f3d, which is this one here. So now it's going to validate. This can take about 30 seconds to a minute. So it's passed, it's done validating. We go to the next step. And add that picture we took or that screenshot just so that it'll allow us to post this 
It won't let you post without a photo. And we're going to call it our parametric bin. Category is organizer. Is that a... And our tag is going to be bin. And we're just going to call it description parametric bin. Looks good to me. We're going to add a print profile, which I already did at the beginning with that 3MF file. That I'm not going to touch. Read the guidelines, and I will publish this model. Now, correct me in the comments, but I don't think there's a way to publish it directly to private, which I wish there was. So now our model's been published, and if you wanted to make that private, you could just change it to private here. Um, I wish there was just a way to do it automatically to private so that you could see how your model presents before actually uploading it. But anyways, small gripe. And so we're just going to click into this parametric bin. And now the super cool feature here is that this customize button is available. And so we can click on that, go into customize, and it's going to bring you to this new page with a parameter drop down here. And we can see all of those parameters that we created in Fusion. So we have our length in millimeters, width millimeters, height millimeters, and wall thickness millimeters. And you can see here why I included those in the variable name. It's because Maker World will not distinguish between different units. So if it's in millimeters, inches, feet, it doesn't care and it won't tell you as part of the variable name. So makes sense to include that in the variable names so that people know what they're adjusting. And then you can also see that that hidden parameter that we didn't star doesn't show up here. So we only get the parameters that we starred earlier. And you can see that here we have the length, width, height, wall thickness, all with the star and hidden we didn't select. So that's how you get them to show up here. And now we can take a look at what this looks like. So we'll change maybe this to 100 by 150 by 20. I'll make the wall thickness four. And we can generate that. And it's gonna take a few moments. And now it's created the new version of this same bin. So it's super powerful. You could create one bolt and then have all the parameters available for people to adjust. And then you model it once and people can adjust it as they need and you never have to model it ever again. Or if you're creating some sort of organizer that holds things like this, and people can go in and, and change it to whatever size they need for their specific item that they're trying to, uh, to organize. Very cool feature. At this point, you can download it. So you can choose what printer you want it to go to from the dropdown here, from the H2D all the way down to the A1 Mini, and you confirm, and then you can download either a 3MF or an STL file which is very powerful. Download STL, we exit out of here and we renew that. You can see that one person has customized it, it's me, um, but that keeps a tally of how many people have customized your model. So a super powerful feature, it's what makes parametric modeling super powerful to begin with. And it's really cool to see them implement this on the online portal here. So. Let me know what you think in the comments and I will see you in the next one.